Okay, the biggest thing on this slide, because we've already talked about most of this stuff, the biggest thing to remember is on your foot metatarsals. Okay, so these are these are those bones that are in the palm of your foot. <laughs> okay. Um, one of the things you want to remember is the the proximal end, the part next to your uh, tarsals is called the base and then the head is the distal end. Where you know like femur, femurs, the head is the proximal end. With metatarsals, the head is at the distal end. The proximal end is called the base. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, any any time you have a head of a bone, it's going to be a more rounded surface. Look, it's going to look like a head. <laughs> it's going to be a more rounded surface. Whereas if you look at if you look at the base, you see how that's a little bit more flat. Like there's a, a concave to it rather than a convex to it, and it's generally a little bit flatter so that it can butt up against the hole. Okay. Huh. <coughs> Well, any, anywhere you've got an articulation, you're going to have them flatting up. Right. Okay, that's that's your articulation. <laughs> but can you see how this is the convex or the rounded part, and this is the concave or spoon part? But I see that they move differently. Yeah. Well, you know, if you think about it, the ends have to, you know, flex and extend, whereas up here you don't... You have to have a little bit of motion, but you don't have a big motion. They just glide. Yeah. All right. Well, we basically talked about this. You know, your great toe is like your um, thumb in that it's just got two phalanges. Whereas the rest of the toes have three. So it's just like your finger construction. Okay. Um, so we start with the great toe, and then these are considered lesser toes. You know, you can talk about them in terms of their numbers one, two, three, four, five. You might say the small toe, you wouldn't really ever say the pinky toe. Or which little piggy it is. <laughs> <laughs> You young ones, is, do they still do this little piggy went to market? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Um, okay, functional aspects of the foot and the ankle. So it's really hard to talk about the foot without the ankle. And so what we're going to have, and we're going to have, is broken down into three parts. So we've got the hind foot, which is your talus and your calcaneus. And this is typically what con contacts the ground first in a heel-to-toe walking sequence. Okay, heel-toe. Okay, then you've got your midfoot, which are these bones here. So it's the rest of the tarsal bones. So here's the first two, and here's the last one, two, three, four, five. So we've got seven tarsal bones instead of eight. So you've got your uh, navicular, your cuboid, and your three cuneiform. And what they do is they provide stability and mobility. And so just like you were saying, Jean, there's gliding that occurs, but it's not a big, big movement. Okay? So if you... It's kind of, it, it's kind of you know, in, and as we get down into the foot, we're going to talk about the arches. But it's kind of like the arches have to be there to give you a little bit of a, a, a spring. Okay? And so in order to make that happen, those have to glide just a little bit, okay? It's, it's um, minute little adjustments that occur. As you're walking over an Indian ground, if those aren't gliding properly, you're not going to be able to adjust your foot to adapt to different levels of ground. And so that's where a lot of that comes from. Okay. So if you have somebody that's falling a lot, there's no other reason, you might need to have somebody look at their feet. And their shoes. All right, and then we've got the forefoot, so that's everything else basically. So that's going to be your metatarsals and your phalanges. And this also, this is minute adjustments. These will be bigger adjustments because it's, it's like if you look at your hand, you can, you know, move your metacarpals around a little bit more than you do your carpals, right? 
say me and your phalanges definitely. You know, for somebody like me that has like crazy long monkey toes, I tend to grab the ground with my feet. You know, especially when I'm not trusting the ground. You know, and and, and that can be problematic over time as well. But. Okay. So let's look at our ankle joint motions. And so we, we know what they are. We've learned how to measure a lot of these.